Here's how to quickly connect up a DHT11 or DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor to an ESP32. First of all, I recommend buying the DHT22 over the DHT11. They're said to be more accurate and also more robust. This cheap DHT11 I bought from AliExpress no longer works. Here's a chart that compares the two types. A DHT22 is roughly twice the cost of a DHT11. Be sure to buy decent components that have good reviews. Now let's get the sensor connected to the ESP32 and take some temperature and humidity readings. Most DHT sensors have three pins, however you might encounter ones that have four pins. If you have one that has three pins, then the plus one will go to the voltage, so on the ESP32 you can either connect that to the 3.3 or the 5 volt pin. I recommend that you use 5 volts with the sensor. If you're using 3.3 volts, then you might find the device doesn't work so well. If you're going to be using the sensor a long way away from the ESP32, then you definitely want to use the 5 volt pin. So apparently if you power the sensor using 5 volts, then you can place it up to 20 meters away from the ESP32. So if you've got a 3 pin sensor, then the data line is usually the one in the middle. And you need to connect this to a digital pin on the ESP32. I recommend using digital pin 2, i.e. GPIO2. So now in the Arduino IDE, let's install the libraries so we can start using the sensor. So you need to go to Tools and then Manage Libraries, then search for DHT Sensor Library. And the one we want is the DHT Sensor Library by Adafruit. So if it's not installed, then install it. Once you've installed it, you can go to File and then Examples. Okay, so they are under Examples from Custom Libraries and then DHT Sensor Library, and you want to use the DHT Tester. So this sketch is pretty much ready to go. So first go to Tools and then Board Manager and ensure you've got the ESP32 selected. So if you've got a basic ESP32 like mine, then the one to select is the ESP32 Dev Module. This normally works with a lot of them. You might be able to find yours here though if it's different. Just be very careful if you've got the latest libraries because the ESP32, S2, C3 and S3 are often listed at the top, so make sure you have the right ones selected. You should also check that the ESP32 is on the correct port, so on the COM port mine is connected to COM5. So there are a couple of changes you might need to make depending on your circumstances. Earlier in the video I recommend connecting it to GPIO2, so if you've connected it to a different pin on the ESP32 then you'll need to change this number. If you're using a DHT11 then you'll have to uncomment this line and comment out the DHT22 line. So I'm using a DHT22 so I will uncomment that one. If you don't know which one you got then generally, generally, generally speaking the DHT11 is blue and the DHT22 is white. So scrolling down to the code there's not really much we have to do. All you have to do is to in the setup routine is call DHT.begin and then in the loop it will take temperature readings. So as I mentioned in the introduction the DHT22 is much slower at taking readings so here we delay for two seconds between making readings. If you're using a DHT11 then potentially you can take readings every one second. So now I've connected up the sensor to the ESP32 and the ESP32 is connected to the PC so let's upload this sketch and get some temperature readings. So I'll hold down the boot button while it's uploading the sketch. And this is a problem that I seem to be having. If I've connected the DHT22 to the ESP32, it won't upload the sketch. So the solution seems to be to disconnect the data feed from the ESP32 while it's uploading a sketch. So I'll try uploading it again. I don't know if it's just me that's having this issue, or maybe because I'm not using a resistor or something, but it is very strange. So now it's uploading this sketch properly. Okay, so now you can go to Tools and then Serial Monitor and change it to 9600 if it's not on there already. So there you see we are getting temperature readings. So according to this it's 28 degrees here. 
Let's see, so I do have some other thermometers. So this is a cheap little one that I bought for Muji, so it has temperature and humidity. Okay, so the DHT22's humidity is exactly the same as this one. The temperature seems way off, so either this one is not very accurate, this one might actually have a DHT11 in it. I haven't dissembled it, but you probably have a similar sensor to that. This is my ancient radio controlled alarm clock and it's really accurate for time. I'm not sure about temperature, but it's years old. So again, it's quite similar to the Muji little device that I just showed. The DHT22 is definitely overstating things a bit. Okay, here's a very old analog sensor from the old days. So this only records temperature. So I think this one's recording about 24 and a half. So for all the progress made with digital, I would say that the uh, analog one still wins. It's still very accurate. It's been accurate for over 40 years now. So if you want to do something with the data, then the variable H has the humidity value in it. The variable T has the temperature in Celsius or centigrade. Finally, the temperature in Fahrenheit is the F variable. If you want to send this data to a PC or other computer or even to the cloud, then I highly recommend using the MQTT protocol. I've made a video about this, so check this one out. So that's basically all you need to do to hook up the ESP32 to the DHT11 or DHT22 temperature sensor. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.